Good evening. My name is Tim Sullivan. I'm the chair of this facilities committee meeting for tonight. We are at the George M. Rom Little Theater, Brockton High, 470 Forest Ave, Brockton, Mass, 02301. Today is Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. The meeting is called to order at 6 p.m. I'm gonna go around for a quorum. The Mayor Robert Sullivan. Here. Judy Sullivan. Here. Claudio. Here. Kathy Ellis. Here. Anna. Here. Tony Rodriguez. Here. Joyce Azak. Here. And Tim Sullivan, I am here as well. Item two, the Huntington School. We have items A, B, and C, the renovation update and itemized cost. Dr. Cobbs. I just want to, before Dr. Cobbs asks, we're gonna have to adjourn this meeting at uh, 6.45 so we can get ready for the second meeting. If this meeting goes longer than that, we'll have to postpone it to another day. Mm -hmm. The meeting next is gonna be a lot of work as well, so we're gonna need 15 minutes to get ready for it. Dr. Thank, thank you, Tim, it is quite a robust agenda. Good evening, school committee members, good evening, Mayor. Um, so we'll start in with the Huntington School. Um, we actually have a, a slide presentation to show you, uh, myself and Assistant Superintendent, uh, Dr. Wald, Dr. Wald, Dr. Dr. Spalding will assist me with the uh, presentation on this. Thank you, Dr. Cobbs. We spend so much time together. Dr. Wolder, Dr. Spaulding, interchangeable. Although those are bigger shoes for to fill. Um, so we just wanted to share with you um, some information. I'll share some information about pre-K programming um, and some projected numbers. And then Dr. Cobbs will share with you some information around um, proposed renovations or needed re renovations for Huntington. Um, as well as some other associated costs. Looks like it's cut off a little bit, but I will read it out loud for you, um, this slide. So I just want to say, um, and any time I talk about what's happening with pre-K right now, I like to begin by saying the vision of what would be an amazing Thing to have every single three-year-old, four-year-old, and almost five-year-old um, to be in some kind of pre-K experience um, in the city of Brockton and the Brockton Public Schools would be absolutely amazing. And we keep that as our vision because we know that's what's good for kids. Um, but in the meantime, um, we, our resources at this time is really fulfilling um, our obligation to students, especially under IDEA. Um, and so just wanted to, again, state the larger vision, um, which is access for all students. Um, but this is a, a quote from the Department of uh, Elementary and Secondary Education. Um, around or about early childhood special education. And so for us right now, the current state in terms of our pre-K programming um, is really designed to meet our obligation and ensure students' rights under IDEA. Um, and our services are delivered in the least restrictive environment um, in the Brockton Public Schools Universal Pre-K Program. I put this instructional priority in here. Um, it's a it's a slightly off topic note, um, but in my mind is just a reminder to all of us that although we're talking about pre-K programming specifically, pre-K still lives within our pre-K through 12 and beyond plan. And so our instructional priority for this year is focused on attending to literacy especially, and most especially, um, for closing gaps for our students with disabilities, um, and that's in grades pre-K through three. So these are some numbers. Um, you have a hard copy hopefully in front of you if they're too small to see from where you are. But this describes where the classrooms are in the district at this moment um, that house pre-K students. And so I'll just give a f one for example at the R known. There are four classrooms, 
but there's a total of eight sessions because all four of those classrooms are half day, uh, run half day sessions, an AM session and a PM session. And then what you see over to the right uh, is the enrollment. We have just four classrooms in the district at this time that are full day, and those are all housed um, at this time at the Downey School. We have 540 students in total um, enrolled at this time. We have 16 students who have um, gone through the uh, evaluation process, and that paperwork, as soon as it's signed, will be added into those, or those students will be added into that 540. Uh, we have about 26 students who are receiving services only, um, which brings us to 582. And then the 322 at the bottom, those that's the number of students who are going currently going through special education process, evaluation process right now. Um, they, the, they will uh, determine eligibility through the team process, of course. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that all 322 will be added to the 582, um, but some of them probably will be found eligible would be my guess. So I carried that 582 number over to this slide, um, which again is the enrollment as of January 5th. The students in process, 322. Um, so by June, uh, we could be looking at as many as 900 students, uh, pre-K students in our program. Um, and we, uh, based on our structure um, now and our capacity at this moment, um, we'll most likely have enough seats and space and, and resources to be able to meet the needs of all those students. We are obligated to meet the needs of all those students, and we will. Um, and when we look to next year, our best guess, it's, it's hard to know at this time because um, as students approach their third birthday, um, if, there are, um, if there is a need to go through an evaluation process, um, that's what would happen, but that, that requires knowing all of the three -year -old, almost three-year-olds for next year. Um, so it's a little hard to predict, but we, base, we, we are guessing uh, or predicting based on past information and trends that will be about the same numbers next year as we are this year. So the, the proposal would be to take all of the classrooms that currently exist in the elementary buildings, which is 18 classrooms in total. So those are the ones that are at are known and um, Downey and the other schools that are listed on that uh, two pages prior and move them over to the Huntington School. In addition from that, the proposal is to move one classroom from the Barrett Russell School over to the Huntington. And there's a note at the bottom that explains why we would do that. We have 13 right now. We would move one classroom um, to reduce it to 12 at the um, uh, Barrett Russell School. And that is to make room for the diagnostic and intervention team at the Barrett Russell. And then we would also have a diagnostic and intervention team at the Huntington School. And when you add those spaces up, we would be using 20 classrooms plus some of the nooks and crannies of office space um, at the Huntington School. So the rationale for doing this, why pick up these classrooms and, and move them over to the Huntington School. Um, Pre-K enrollment is increasing. Right now, um, we are 72 more than what we were last year. K-5 enrollment is increasing. We are up 252 students. I know there's a lot of talk about enrollment going down, but we uh, are up at the elementary level. Um, and so with the pre-K, we love having pre-K, um, in, and the principals love having pre-K in those elementary buildings, um, but they are bursting at the seams. Um, they, in several, and for those of you who have children at the elementary level, you know this, but several of our elementary schools have lost music rooms and art rooms because we had to make them into classrooms, and so art teachers and music teachers are traveling on carts. Um, we're changing all kinds of spaces into the spaces that we need. Um, and then more efficient use uh, of resources, including transportation, uh, which Dr. Cobbs will speak to you, um, and consolidated expertise. In high-performing districts, they establish early childhood centers for a reason, and that is to really put in one place 
expertise around early childhood um, and, and have the, those who have been trained and those who have experiences specifically in early childhood, and I will add specifically in early childhood special education, in one place. Um, and so this would get us to a place where we had that expertise in two places instead of the 18 um, spread out throughout the district. So we, these are definitely estimates, um, but we uh, created this list of, um, in terms of staffing, what the implications would be. In terms of teachers and service providers and paraprofessionals, there's no additional cost from what it is this year because they would move from where, whichever building they were in to the Huntington. So that cost would remain the same. Um, in addition, the assistant director uh, for special education, early childhood, also that person is in place this year. Um, so it's not an additional cost for this move, um, but it would concentrate um, that the support that that person gives to two sites instead of the many sites that it's happening at now. Um, and then the other ones uh, would be and again, their estimates, um, but projected expenses in terms of staff, annual expenses. Um, so a principal, a school nurse, adjustment counselor, custodians, administrative assistant, lunch aide, um, and that total at the bottom brings them all together. I'm gonna hand the presentation over. Oh, I will take questions first. Thank you very much for the clarification on um, kind of the reorg of the classrooms. I guess my question is, will we be able to see, because I feel like I feel like we've been challenged on how to scale because our enrollment has been up and down. And so we, I feel, and I haven't been on, on the committee as long as some of my other colleagues, but I feel like we're constantly shifting. We're moving students like either across town or and just trying to make it work. And so one question I have is when we, when we looked at this plan, which I don't necessarily disagree with, but is this a sustainable plan and how long will this plan last us, do you think, before we have to revisit the pre-K question again? And then my second part of that question is, what do we need to do to get full day pre-K? So the, um, to answer the first question, um, it, is, it is obviously difficult to predict um, what the need will be from one year to the next. You can kind of study trends and get a sense. Um, I will say that the, the 20 classrooms that we counted out and looked at at the Huntington, that's not all of the spaces that are there. So there is still more space in the building um, which allows, obviously, for growth if we had to um, add additional classrooms. There are, unfortunately, not enough classrooms uh, to offer pre-K to every child um, in the district. Um, even, the, even when we think about our half-day programs and um, which feedback we hear from families, I'm going to predict you hear the same from families. Uh, the half day isn't quite convenient. It doesn't fit into work schedules and things like that. But um, even just taking the number of classrooms that we have, you know, those 18 classrooms, um, those are half day sessions. And so you would need 36 mm -hmm. instead of 18. You'd need twice as many classrooms and twice as many teachers for the same number of students just to have full day. Um, and that's not all of the students, obviously, uh, that, that are out there um, who want to be in pre-K or whose families want them in pre-K. Um, so it, it would, the cost would be significant, um, both in terms of space um, to, to make usable space, but then also just the staffing. Um, again, the vision is there. We are not going to let it go because um, it's the right thing to do um, uh, on behalf of children and their families, um, but it, the cost is significant. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I have one question, Judy. Uh, on the staffing, Mrs. Spaulding, the, uh, everybody you have listed here seems to be full-time except for the lunch aid of $9,000. 
what is that? Just a part-time person coming in for an hour or so a day? Yeah, similar to similar to the um, folks that we have in the elementary buildings. There are at the moment we have the four full-day um, Downey classrooms that would be there, so they would still be served lunch. Um, students who are in the half-day program either get breakfast in the morning um, or a snack in the afternoon. Um, but um, yeah, so it's kind of hours that would be based on whatever the meal schedule would be for the students. It just, it just seems awful, awful low, the $9,000. It doesn't even seem enough for a part-time person for an hour a day. Right, that, that's a good point. Um, so that, doesn't, that slide doesn't have chart wells on it. Um, so that might also be why it seems low. Maybe, but I can recheck that figure also. Yeah, if you would, it just seems yeah. like a, an awful low amount. It, you're going to have to have at least uh, two people, not you know, not just one. And nobody's going to work for nine thousand a year. Yeah, it seems to be real, real low. Uh, Judy, you had a question? Thank you. Thank you, Tim, thank you. Um, my questions, I have a few questions. Um, okay, so the state doesn't fund us for preschool at all, right? Part, do you know the amount? Yeah. Okay, but we are, we are currently serving what we have to under idea, right? Disabil students that have disabilities, their services are being met, the students are being seen, and they have um, their services being met. That's in their educational plan, right? Okay, so that's, that's what we have to do by law, okay? So um, that's the idea, right? Okay. Um, my, my main concern too is um, the students that were in the school are at the mall. And I don't believe that the mall is a, a good place, a classroom type. And there are questions in the budget whether the mall location is, is even. Okay, is even like been put through the city council and all that. So I have big concerns with, the, with all of this. Okay, because our checkbook isn't even balanced. And here we are adding on many, many costs, which we're not required by law to do this yet. I think we should balance our checkbook and then we're very happy to have preschool and open it up to everybody that wants it, but we have to have the money for it. That's my biggest concern. We're in a deficit and they keep uncovering more money that we owe. And I, I just, <coughs> I need to be reassured that we can even afford it. Thank you. Ms. Ellis. Thank you. Um, the staffing. So we've got the teachers, which obvi are obviously have been hired, the assistant <coughs> director, the principal, the school nurse, the school adjustment counselor, those are only fees that came out this year, but they existed last year, correct? When the Huntington was open. So even though, even though they look like they're in addition, didn't these positions already exist previously at the Huntington when we had the Huntington open or no? Are these brand new positions and not just Gotcha, okay, okay, that's what I was wondering is if these already existed and during construction we kind of didn't, we don't have them at the Huntington, but they are actually additions, okay. Any other questions? Just one more. Kathy? So I guess if we're looking at what we need for staffing projected costs at almost half a million dollars and admittedly I understand it's estimated, it's completely estimated, but if we look at the projected cost for staffing it, almost 520000 and then we look at what the projected cost for the renovations are, we're almost at a million dollars. Can we afford that? So the 
short answer to the question is, is yes, um, it's particularly for the construction costs, as those that I will explain in a little bit, those will come out of the contractual services uh, that we have plenty of money in right now. There's about $6 million in that account right now. Um, the staffing, again, we can, we, we don't use some of those monies. We can actually, you know, change the line items to, to cover the staffing for this. So. Okay. And is this something, you know, I know this is, I don't know if anybody was thinking, is this something that we've reviewed? I don't know, I don't think you and I have, Dr. Cobbs, but have we reviewed it with the city CFO to ensure right. that it's coming out of? Which we will, we'll, you know, Troy, Troy snuck in the back door, but we absolutely will, to, to make sure we can change those dollars to the line items to afford this. Yeah. Okay. Judy. Thank you. Um, I was just thinking that maybe, I don't know, we could ask the mayor and um, a CFO if we would be able to have a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we can afford a feasibility study to, mm -hmm. to look into it, Dr. Cobbs, so that, you know, we could, because I think, you know, mm -hmm. I want to follow along with you, and I know Certainly. we well, have to work together. And yeah, I think I, I if understand. we can afford a feasibility study, mm -hmm. Um, and then everybody would be in on everything that's going to involve okay. and what the cost would be. I, but I have no idea if we have the money for that either, but it would be a good thing. Yeah, everything costs money. And, and one of the things that we need to realize is regardless of what we do with the Huntington Building, whoever, whichever students we, population we put in there, we, we're going to have to do the renovations and, because, you, you know, the building with the roof leaking, it's, it really sustained some damage. But, uh, Right. So either and, way, we're going to, 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 what you see up there, most of those things will, will, will not change for, for the half million dollars. And it also just really concerns me that the kids are at a mall, the other kids that right. are, are special. They're actually in a really good location for that particular school population. And that it really wasn't put through the city council. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a land deal, so it has to be put through the city council. Mm -hmm. And it really concerns me because we can't just not have a place for those kids. That's and this correct. was their school before that. Well, that's only, again, that's on the agenda to talk about tonight. You're a thera right. A therapeutic day school. Mm -hmm. Those children have many needs, and I think we have to have that also in the forefront of our mind because those are the students that we have to educate right now. Yeah, I agree. Until the <laughs> state gives us money, <clears throat> sorry, Dr. Cops, until the state gives us money for preschool, mm -hmm. we have to have the funding in order to have these things. But I thank you very much for all your hard work. This is excellent. Thank job you. on this. Yeah, okay. well, can you have help. got everything here. It was that a team need. effort. But and you know, I think just Spalding, thank you for your presentation. It was great. So if I may, the students that are at the therapeutic day school right now at the Westgate Mall, again this is on the agenda for later if we you know, some of the questions you asked me for. Um, they're actually in a great location. It's a good location for that stu student population. Um, we could do some things to to better suit their needs over there, like the gymnasium and cafeteria, but it works, and, and that's something that this body has to decide what you're going to do with that population in that building, because I think they should stay there, in my opinion, but we can discuss it. Um, like I said, with the renovation costs, so I gave you a hard copy of these to, to review as well. We're going to have to do this anyway, except for maybe the outside playground, but, you know, um, but at some point we're going to have to do these renovations, and we talked about this when we did the roof on the Huntington building. So. Um, you know, this is a community need that I, I think that we need to, you know, go forward with. But again, you know, that's why we're we're talking about this again. We we talked about it before, and we need to come to a decision one way or the other. Ms. Azak's got a question, and then Tony Rodriguez. Thank you. So, just a reminder: we have um, some new members, and just just a reminder: so the MSBA, we can't keep the Huntington School closed. Right now, we have mm -hmm. IT there, so we have a we have an obligation. We have to put something at the Huntington School. Um, I don't know offhand how many years the MSBA gives you, but we cannot keep it mm -hmm. closed to students for a certain period of time, after a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So if someone can look into that, <clears throat> I do know that. And then I know when we, we cut the program. It's one year. I'm sorry? It's one year. Okay, thank you. We talked about it at the last facilities mm -hmm. meeting. It's a one year. We have one year to do the renovation. Thank you. And then so, uh, yeah, I was at a conference. So back to um, the um, Huntington. We can't keep it closed, and we do need to get something in there. <clears throat> and the second thing is, is I know I heard from a lot of BPS employees um, and families, um, especially where the students at that age, we do need to get them into our schools. They need to get them, adju get them adjusted 
it's an easier transition for them to go into the kindergarten and the first grade. So I did hear from a lot of families that it does help them. Um, I, I get the whole money if we can, but the other thing is, is we can't keep the school closed. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to make sure, because I know, again, IT's been there, and I believe it was empty before that. So uh, we just want to make sure we follow what we need to follow and, and not have any issues with the MSBA. Um, and I th think that was it, because I did, you know, it was very thorough. Thank you for the information and the presentation, Mrs. Spaulding. Um, but thank you, Dr. Cobbs. You're welcome. Tony Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, just for a point of information before the two members joined us in this cycle, this, um, the school committee did vote to make the uh, Huntington the pre-K center. We did take a formal vote on uh, making that. I'm not sure if we need another vote um, to move anything forward. This is a population that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we need a feasibility study because we do have the professionals in the school district that's already vetted this out. and. Uh, Mr. Clarkson, um, you know, if he co-signs that, you know, we have the funds there, I think we should uh, mm -hmm. move forward on it. I know we're going to speak about the Huntington. I do um, agree with Mrs. Sullivan. Uh, I'm not comfortable um, having uh, our therapeutic school um, at the Westgate Mall. Um, I did tour the facility. Um, it, it, it is, a, it, it, the building is, it will suit them. It does suit them, mm -hmm. but I don't think the actual location uh, is suitable and we have to um, look at different options of where we can place uh, uh, those, those students. Thank you. Mr. Gomes, then Jody. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was just looking over these numbers and I just had a quick question. Uh, for the ones that are already under construction, did we bid those out to multiple contractors to make sure we get the best? We're price? doing this in-house. Just okay. 90, probably 95 percent of the work will be done in-house. The only thing that we may sub out is the the additional bathroom, the rough plumbing for the second floor. Other than that, we'll we'll do it all in-house. Okay, thank you. So the prices that you see are from the vendors that we'll buy the materials from. Jody. Um, yes, I just wanted to speak to. Um, it wasn't an empty building before. The uh, Huntington Therapeutic Day kids were in there, so the building wasn't empty before. Also, the committee never voted on, it was just voted in subcommittee. It was never put to the full committee. And it was, bef this discussion was before the 14.4 million was discovered, that we were in a deficit of 14.4 million, which is now added on way more money than that, that this was even in discussion. And Superintendent, Superintendent Thomas was going to do this, and then when, when everything, the deficit occurred, and he knew there was a deficit, of course he didn't put it in for this year. So I just wanted to update the public on that. Mm -hmm. This was never put to the full committee, and that was before the um, deficit was discovered. So I'm, I'm sure uh, Troy will speak, speak to the deficit from last year as opposed to this year's budget. So this money is coming out of this year's budget. Last year is last year. We have sufficient funds in this year's budget to, to take care of these expenses. Anna Oliver. Thank you, Dr. Cobbs. Um, I appreciate answering a lot of questions that I had sent over, especially with the SPED department. What are the class ratios right now? I'm sorry? The pre-K. What are how many um, students are in the class right now? How many class students? The average is 7 to, to 10, 15 students in the class. Um, how long is usually the special needs classes like, like the Downey or smaller classes? The other one at the Bat Russell at, at 15 students or so. 15. What, how long does it take the education process usually? The SPED process? Like how many months? Oh, the evaluation process. The evaluation yeah. process. Um, let me bring my expert. <laughs> So under IDEA, uh, the IEP plan must be in place by the third birthday. So generally speking, the regulations allow a 30-day window to evaluate and then a 15-day window for a meeting to determine eligibility, develop a plan. So that's where that 45-day timeline comes in. Part of what we've been working on with our community partners and uh, local preschools, Head Starts, et cetera, are memorandums of understanding to increase, to, to sort of tell us sooner that the students are coming. So there's a general, we, we can find out, for example, from an agency that a student is turning three, um, you know, three weeks before their third birthday, which then condenses the time. Our, our federal obligation is an IEP by the third birthday. 
Um, so we have been working uh, to increase this, the, the timeline, right, relative to when we know they're coming. Uh, some students still will know they're coming at the second birthday six month period, so two six. Those are generally the kids coming out of early intervention. The challenge becomes evaluating a two-year-old, as you, many, many of you who are parents or have young children, uh, the development and growth that we see week to week is significant. So even though we may know a student uh, at two years, six months is coming to Brockton for an evaluation, the team may not initiate uh, paperwork and referrals until roughly 60 or so days before the birthday. Does that make sense? So, so that's part of that number in queue. It's not necessarily all the kids currently being evaluated, it's all the students we know at this point okay. will need an evaluation before their third birthday. So from the point of, the, of a consent being signed by the parent or guardian, uh, there's a total 45 day timeline to have the evaluation done and the, and the IEP proposed. Those, those numbers usually go up or they increase at times? They, 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 oh, they go up each, uh, over the course of the year, right, children have birthdays every single day. Mm -hmm. What I, to Kathy's earlier question, what I will say that we did differently this year um, is uh, we projected out total seats necessary by June of 2024. What was happening the year prior is we were opening classrooms to place, so if we look at the fall of um, 22, we opened the number uh, uh, worth enough capacity to, to sort of uh, meet the needs of the kids who were there in June of 22. Right, so what happened is by November, we were scrambling to open additional preschool classrooms because as kids had their third birthday, we had to continually kind of get ahead of having space and seats for them. Uh, so we changed that practice last year, which is where you'll see we are, we have plenty of, that's where Dr. Spaulding said, we anticipate having room for everybody by June, but what you'll notice is not all of the classrooms are full. So in, in the half day integrated, the, the classes are capped at 15 students per class, and in substantially separates, it's eight. So generally, so we know we have enough capacity to handle the average of kids eligible from the last two fiscal years. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Rodriguez? Just a point of information. Um, when uh, Superintendent Thomas um, did his old reorganization of restructure of the school district that moved move into Champion High School, um, we did vote all the changes in one, and there was only two members, myself and Mrs. Azak, that voted no against that, that measure and that and did include the Huntington School because if we didn't vote that in, the students wouldn't be at the Westgate Mall location at this time. So I just urge every member to go back and look at our, uh, our minutes and our meetings and also on YouTube, and you can see how we voted because everything was um, detailed in language of actually renovating the uh, the Huntington School to make that into the pre-K. That was actually voted, and I stand on that. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Sullivan? I don't remember that at all, because why would we be doing this if we already voted on the Huntington School to have a preschool? Why would we be doing this? That's correct. That's just an update, and that's why I said to go back and look at our agenda, and uh, it's not an argument, I'm just saying just to go back and watch it and say it, so. Any other questions for Dr. Cobb or Karen Spaulding? So uh, next on the slide is, so some of the costs that, that we, that you questioned, uh, Ms. Ehlers, is uh, we can possibly blow up some of the costs by reducing our transportation um, and changing our tier from tier three to tier two. Um, I, I did have a quick conversation this afternoon with Kim Gibson, the president of the BEA, to just so she wouldn't hit, be blindsided by this this slide tonight, but we we will go and talk to them. And when talking to the transportation department, we you know we don't have the additional assets to use that we can use existing routes from the tier two transportation tier and absorb the tier tier three for this pre K you know population, and and not spend any any additional dollars or use any additional buses. So. So the, the, that, would, that could save us significantly by not the tier three. So again, some of the costs for this, this you know, this say million dollars, if you will, for, for this for year, well, well, it's only 500,000, roughly 400,000 for one year. And then there's 500,000 for the going forward for, for costs and, you know, expenses, salaries. So, so we can realize some savings through like switching the tiers and, and negotiating with the BEA. So. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, and <clears throat> Ms. Gibson seemed okay with that? Sorry? Ms. Gibson seemed okay with that, for us to move them from? Well, they have to discuss it with the union, and, and we have but to it, work out probably an MOA to, to yeah. but it, initially, it, you know, it, it, it makes sense. So. Yeah, it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Dr. Cobb, where are you on this? Item A, B, or C? Are you on the, where um, are you? We're still on, you know, the Huntington, Huntington renovations. So. A, B, or C? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Any other questions for Dr. Cobbs, Ms. Sullivan? Um, I'm not seeing it, but do we have, if it's gonna be 30 classrooms, do we have like the cost of what teachers, would, would it would cost for every teacher in 30 classrooms? 20, 20 classrooms at, at the, you know, you're talking about the Huntington, there's 20 classrooms. Oh, okay, so. 30. So the, the teachers are, there's no additional cost for teachers. They already exist at the other schools right now where the pre-K classrooms are. So. Oh, so it wouldn't be any added teacher salaries or para salaries? Not at, no, no, para salaries. no, exactly. Just the principal and the, and the uh, nurse and the, you know, those personnel that you saw earlier. So the only added staff would be the principal and? The, the nurse and, and the custodians and, and the uh, kitchen staff, you know, dietary staff. Right, but also, do we have the um, cost of the furniture? Because we would need to have completely. Yep, it's coming up. The furniture in there. Oh, I don't have it on you, but you have it on your sheet. We, we, we did put in, actually, on that. Let me go back, actually. It, the furniture is on there. The, the uh, classroom furniture for rugs and the little kitchen stoves and things that they use for the, for the pre-K classrooms. Okay, it's so on. it is. Where's the furniture on this sheet? It should say the second from, second from the last line. Okay. Miscellaneous uh, furniture for the classroom. 20 classrooms, $20,000. Yes. Okay, so could we like, right, yeah, right no, here. I see it, but I, um, Dr. Cobbs, sure. um, could we see like a detail of that? Like what's included in that? Well, it, it's what? difficult to say that. It, That's it, why I say we need a feasibility study. Well, it, study. each classroom, you, if you've been in a pre-K classroom, we, we set them up with the little <laughs> furniture that they use, like the rugs that they put on the floor with the different colors. We have the little kitchen stoves and things that they use. That's, that's what we're talking about. We already have all the okay, classroom furniture, the, the chairs, is, the desks. I kind of want to see the cost of all that. So we we, we added up before <laughs> I ever approved it. You know, everything, because that's the thing that was missing before when we, we didn't so have we things could, We could certainly get that information see, for you. Like it was just a total cost and we really don't know what that is, you know, until we see it itemized. Yeah. Certainly. I just want to add one, one piece. The, um, the specialized <coughs> pre -K, the specialized seating, things like that, that would actually go with the classroom. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have to buy anything. Because they wouldn't. That's a good point. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, does a nice yep. job of really outlining yes. what every pre-K classroom should have. Um, so we would use that as the guidance to make sure we set them up. Okay. As well. yeah. Dr. Cobb, just a reminder, we only have four minutes left before the end of the meeting. I'm good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, anybody? Ms. Ellis and Tony Rodriguez, second. Oh, okay, I was gonna try to round it out, so I'll make it quick for Mr. Rodriguez. I was just gonna say the ETA, I think we know the completion on that is by September. Absolutely, like the goal is we, for we, us we do get, get it, we, we yeah. gain an extra week in September because they start later than, than the uh, regular population, but yes, it'd be September. And then we obviously know the student population that's moving to this building. Right, it's, it's pre-K, pre hopefully, that's, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, that's and so would we say that anything from number three on, all building leases, I, I, I'm just throwing this out there to the group, we can, we can either kick that to the next meeting and make sure right. that we get another facilities meeting on for February, but yep. I will let the chair decide and thank mm -hmm. you. Tony Rodriguez. On the uh, tier two, when we shift that, I know we don't have nobody here from transportation. Is, are we gonna have to add extra drivers to that? No. I know a lot of the pre-K. No additional door -door. assets, no. So there's no additional no. assets to it? No. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Sorry. Any other questions? We'll have to continue this to the next meeting. It will start at item three, the building leases. Thank Dr. Cobb? We'll figure out a date. Well, 
Yeah, I need a motion to adjourn from somebody. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Oh, just, just on the motion, uh, Mr. Chair. So the another facilities meeting will be called and it will start where on this current agenda number three, all other building leases? Correct. And just if through you, Chair, uh, Dr. Cobbs, when, when, when would you like, when do you think it would be best to have this next facilities meeting? Um, honestly, if we're gonna do the, the, as a committee of the whole, we can do it and then, you know, I'm not sure if we have time on the 16th before that, you know, could I have the information ready to go now, but whenever, you know, it's the will of the body here to, to put the meeting on its agenda. Thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. Is that agreeable with everybody? The 16th, we'll have to make it at six o'clock? Just, just a quick question. Do, I know Mr. Clarkson was talking, you know, if I was with our finances, for us to move money around. Uh, I know the money's already, you know, it's already there. I don't know if you want to speak to that, Mr. Clarkson. If the money is there, so I don't think there, there should be a, uh, any further discussion on the Huntington if, if the money's already allocated and we have the funds sufficient in their budget to to get these renovations um, done, or is it? Do you do we need a vote to to move money around, or to actually authorize the superintendent to send, the acting superintendent to uh, to spend these funds? Tony, we got a motion to adjourn on the floor, and it's already been seconded. Yeah, we can. On. But on the motion, uh, on the motion, Mr. Chair, there hasn't been a vote yet. There's no so, vote, so uh, that's why I asked. On the, the on the motion, it, it could be asked asked and answered under the motion. All right, go ahead. So that's why Mr. Clarkson's here. Good evening, everyone. Troy Clarkson, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, I saw the agenda, so I, I came to listen to the presentation. As Dr. Cobbs mentioned, we haven't had the opportunity to review it in detail. So what I would suggest is uh, I will commit to meeting with Dr. Cobbs uh, and with Trish Boyer to review the figures before your next facilities meeting and have a recommendation for you there. I'm not comfortable having just seen it, really. Uh, I'd like to understand and more deeply what comprises that $400,000 estimate, what the other ancillary costs might be. So I, I think reviewing it together at your next meeting is advisable. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank any you. other questions? We have a motion on the floor and seconded. Just by a show of hands, all in favor? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>